there's good reason to think that nutrition and lifestyle have, play a large role in the incidence of breast cancer, but um, you know, it's, it's certainly a hot topic with a lot of questions. So what we're going to do, similar to last time, we're going to have a presentation uh, that we're going to go through, and then afterwards we're going to take questions. There's a lot of people who wrote in really phenomenal questions, uh, um, and, but we'll, you know, feel free to ask questions as we go, uh, questions that are pertinent to, to the presentation, that type of thing. Um, we can touch on a little bit later. So my dad was going to talk a little bit about the background and history linking diet and breast cancer, and I wanted to talk about, um, from a more clinical point of view, you know, from a physician's point of view, what are dietary interventions? Yeah for breast cancer to prevent breast cancer and talk about some of the major trials that have been undertaken. Just in terms of a little background, and my dad will talk more about this, but lifestyle is definitely implicated uh, for breast cancer death rates. This is one study out of many different types of studies, but this is one study looking at trends in breast cancer mortality across the past so 30 to 40 years or so. And if you look in Japan, that's the blue bars um, here, you can see that since 1970 to 2005, the rate of breast cancer death rates actually doubled. And in Taiwan, it was much the same thing, even more so. So there certainly are areas with good mortality statistics over time where the breast cancer has become much, much more common. And um, certainly that implicates when it happens that quickly, it's one aspect, uh, one type of evidence that implicates in something about the environment that may be changing. We know also from many other types of studies, and there's a huge, of course, an absolutely enormous body of research on breast cancer and different risk factors, but we know that there are many different mediators of risk for breast cancer. So, for example, if you have metabolic syndrome, uh, that's a high, that puts you at higher risk. Uh, insulin, uh, and growth factors sort of lumped together. Those those are linked to uh, risk. All types, several types of hormones are linked. It's not just estrogen, but also male type male hormones and estrogens are linked. Um, a lack of physical activity is strongly linked. One of the more more uh, stronger associations. And uh, markers of inflammation, body weight is linked, and alcohol intake, and of course uh, Western diet, fruits and vegetables. And if you look at all of these things that are linked over many, many different types of studies, many different um, uh, you know, countries, uh, uh, both in animal studies, uh, human observational studies, and so forth, you start putting this together. We know, of course, that metabolic syndrome, growth factors, hormones, markers of inflammation, and body weight all are strongly linked to what we eat. So, and of course, when you look at diet itself, it's, it's often linked. So when you look at, um, you know, the mechanisms here and what controls these mechanisms, it's very hard not to think that diet is likely to have a very strong influence on breast cancer risk and recurrence. So, um, I want to go sort of to what what many in medicine consider to be the gold standard of research trials, though, and that's the uh, intervention trials, randomized um, intervention trials, looking at, at both primary prevention of breast cancer and the secondary prevention of breast cancer. And there's been three absolutely enormous, very well done, um, very expensive, uh, you know, well-reported, highly published trials. One is the Women's Health Initiative, the other is the Women's Intervention Nutrition Study, and the other is Women's Healthy Eating and Living Randomized Trial. So let's just jump right in. And the Women's Health Initiative was it, almost mind-bogglingly enormous in my mind. You know, got almost 50,000 women randomized into um, a dietary group or a control group. And uh, they none of them, they didn't have a diagnosis of breast cancer at the time, so they were looking at primary prevention of breast cancer. And basically, the question they asked was, was a low-fat diet, can a low-fat diet prevent breast cancer? Because so much of the, uh, as my dad will mention, so much of the focus has been on fat and breast cancer. And when they, they, they gave one group of women, you know, one, one of the intervention group of women here, a diet to adhere to, they really focused on fat, and they actually did a pretty good job of reducing fat. So let's take a look here at the intervention group 
from the start of the study and the six years into the study. At the start of the study, about 38% of their total calories came from fat. And within a year, they really cut that down quite significantly to 24% of energy from fat. And then as in most studies, uh, you know, the intervention kind of, the maintenance of the intervention kind of wanes and people started consuming more fat, but still less by, by year six. If you look at the actual foods they ate, of course, which is very important, if you look at fruits and veggies that they had every day, at baseline they were eating, this is combined, okay, combined fruits and vegetable servings, 3.6 servings. Um, in one year this increased a little bit to five, about five servings and then uh, maintained at a slightly higher level. If you look at grain intake, it was roughly about the same, you know, kind of bounced around through the, through the uh, intervention. If you look at whole grains, again, really no, no significant, not, not really a significant change. Okay, so uh, interestingly, when you think about an over, overall dietary pattern, you really have to question whether their dietary pattern was changing very much. They certainly did reduce their fat intake, at least for a little bit. Um, and it reflects in the weight. So if you look at the weight on average, they started at about uh, 169 pounds. And at year three, they were on average about 167. So a little bit of weight loss, but uh, pretty minimal. Okay, so um, sort of keep file that away, some of these, some of these interventions and the focus here. And um, let's look now at the results of that study. So the Women's Health Initiative. These are two lines that show the cumulative um, uh, risk of uh, invasive breast cancer, the hazard for uh, basically for invasive breast cancer. And if you look at this bottom line, this is the low fat diet arm. And as we go along here, it, it starts to go get a little bit more spaced, a little bit lower. And the short of it here is that the Women's Health Initiative found that there was about a 9% reduction in um, invasive breast cancer risk uh, for women following the low-fat diet, that low-fat intervention that, that you're remembering. Um, now, this was not statistically significant, though. So this weak, the very weak effect is sort of trended in the direction they thought it might. But if, you know, by statistical methods, this could have just been chance. Um, uh, so very, very weak, very, very weak result. Let's move on to the Women's Intervention Nutrition Study. This, again, very, very large study. This was 2,400 women who had already been diagnosed with early-stage breast cancer, and they did a five-year study. And uh, they really focused, again, on fat and on, on some weight loss. If uh, They actually recommended, a, of all the three studies, the lowest fat diet of all. Uh, the women here started out with about 30% of their total calories from fat. And after one year, they got all the way down to 20 and they actually maintained this uh, fat reduction pretty well. Um, as, a, as a marker of their overall, you know, other dietary intake, their fiber intake was about 18 grams per day and went up to uh, 19 is about one gram per day difference. So again, not a huge, obviously they did not dramatically increase their fiber intake or the foods that contain fiber. But with that fat reduction, they did lose weight Okay, so of all the three studies I'm going to show you, this had the greatest weight loss. They lost about four to five pounds on this diet. And this study showed that uh, this was, the, this was the, the one that showed a statistically significant reduced risk with a low-fat diet. There was a 24% reduced risk of relapse or recurrence in this low-fat diet group at five years. Okay, so... 24%, that's, uh, that's, that sounds nice, but another way to look at the, and it is nice, but another way to look at this is um, if you think about a number needed to treat, I don't need to get into this too, too much, this calculation, but um, another way to flip the statistic around is to, is to consider this fact that about 38 women who had early stage breast cancer in the study, 38 women had to be treated for five years with this low fat diet to prevent one recurrence or relapse. Now that's certainly not very impressive, but you know, it's, it is a, it is a, a, a real finding, but you know, it, it is a positive finding. So let's move on to the last one, the women's health, healthy eating and living randomized trial. 
this again was a massive study. When I when I look at these numbers, you know, 2,500, 3,000 women, these are women who, who are diagnosed breast cancer patients. And to accumulate cohorts that large in a randomized trial with a dietary intervention, these are large, multi-center, uh, very impressive uh, studies. And these are women who had previously been um, treated for early stage breast cancer. So let's do the same exercise here. They focused here on increasing fruit and vegetable intake and lowering fat intake. And, uh, you know, it, on, on the surface, they made some real changes here. So uh, at baseline, they were eating about four servings of vegetables a day, these women. And for, in six months to a year, they maxed out at almost eight, at around eight servings a day. And then like all of, all other studies, the maintenance um, sort of wanes and it, it all slid backward from there. But even by six years, they were still consuming some more vegetables. Fruit servings, less impressive. Uh, they went from three and a half to marginally up to back to three and a half. Fiber intake, um, unlike the other two studies, there was a more significant difference in fiber intake as they were increasing these. They went from 21 to, to about 30 and then slid back significantly. Same thing with fat intake, okay? So they went from 28% of energy from fat down to 22% and then slid backward to, to a more uh, fat diet. And interestingly, in this study, body weight did not really correlate with the dietary changes. So they had marginal changes in body weight, um, uh, which I, I, I just find to be interesting. I don't quite know what to make of that. That could be a discussion in itself. But what did they find in the Women's Healthy Eating and Living Randomized Trial? Here's another one of these uh, hazard ratio type of uh, graphs. There's actually two lines here. One represents the intervention group and one represents the control group. And look at this, they, there's no difference. And in fact, that's the researcher's conclusion. Despite those dietary changes they made, there was absolutely no effect on um, recurrence, uh, disease-free survival uh, on, on, uh, uh, from breast cancer. So um, where does this leave us? Uh, these are the three largest randomized trials to date, and they've been unimpressive at best and uh, sort of demoralizing uh, for, for a lot of people thinking about this. And this is why I still remain very conservative when I talk about diet and breast cancer, even though there are so many indications that diet makes is likely to make a very big difference, there just is a great lack of research. And I, and I, uh, I, I remain very um, conservative when I discuss this. But let me point out one thing here, okay? And this has probably already popped into everybody's head. You've gone through the course or are going through the course. All of these interventions here are basically testing rather mild uh, changes, you know, a slight increase in plants or fruits and vegetables for a fairly slight but low uh, uh, a uh, small period of time that the changes are maintained. And if you look at the overall fat, you know, fat intake, for example, those main changes are maintained for a year or two years. Uh, two of the three studies that people really slid backward after making only moderate changes. And we know, of course, that people were starting from a very, very, very bad diet. Okay, the standard North American, American diet. So I have to ask, you know, did any of these trials actually test the hypothesis that, that we propose, that a whole food plant-based diet may have a remarkable effect on breast cancer? And I would say they didn't. And just as a, to highlight that, if you look at the Women's Health Initiative, that was the first one, remember, where they did have a re reduced uh, reduction in fat, significant. Um, they also looked at heart disease. So for women who didn't have heart disease and they adopted that low fat diet with marginal changes in plants, did it have an effect on heart disease? And what they found was this, over a mean of 8.1 years, a dietary intervention that reduced total fat intake and increased intakes of vegetables, fruits, and grains did not significantly reduce the risk of coronary heart disease, stroke, or cardiovascular disease, and postmenopausal women and achieved only modest effects on cardiovascular disease risk factors. So here we have this study basically saying that diet does not really make a difference for cardiovascular disease risk factors. And that affirms to me that these changes were very modest 
um, because now we have the proof of concept really from Dr. Ornish and Dr. Esselstyn that in fact, a whole food plant-based diet, if done all the way, can halt or reverse even advanced heart disease. So I would say that um, our hypothesis has not yet been tested, but I remain extremely cautious and conservative when I talk about cancer because I do think it, that we're likely to find that cancer is going to be different and, and perhaps less responsive than metabolic disease, although I'm getting raised eyebrows from my dad. Um, no, no. Uh, one last thing in all of these studies there there is you know these researchers that uh, i mentioned i have a great deal of respect and i actually think we've we've learned a lot from these studies and uh very well done but i do take issue with some of the interpretation and some of the news that comes out of them this is the title of the women's healthy eating and living randomized trial they wrote and the title of their of their seminal paper their results they wrote influence of a diet very high in vegetables fruit and fiber and low in fat on prognosis following treatment for breast cancer this makes it sound like it's you know it, they tested an extreme diet and it still didn't work these this type of word very i think used in a in a title of a scientific journal is unusual and particularly when i think about um you know what I think of, if I were to describe a diet as very high in vegetables, it certainly would be very different, <laughs> very different than, uh, than what they actually tested. 